When we think of circulation in our bodies, we commonly think of our blood. We think of the veins and arteries that transport it, and the heart that beats to move it through our bodies. There is, however, another circulatory system that exists in our bodies that is often overlooked. It is called the lymphatic system. It has its own pumping system, its own fluid called lymph fluid, and its own vessels called lymphatic vessels. While the blood delivers oxygen and nutrients to the cells, the lymph is responsible for removing waste products from the cells, as well as dealing with infections. If your body were a small city, then the lymphatic system would include the garbage men, the sewer system, and the police force all rolled into one. When the lymphatic system is functioning properly, wastes are removed from the cells and infections are dealt with quickly and efficiently, often without your ever knowing that you are even exposed to toxins or an infection. But when the lymphatic system isn't working well, wastes accumulate and infections become chronic resulting in fatigue, depression, and poor health. Let's look first at how the lymphatic system removes wastes. Lymph fluid bathes all the cells of the body. Think of lymph as a slow-moving river, washing away the waste products created in the normal functioning of our cells. After cleansing the tissue, the lymph fluid is then transported through a series of tubes called lymphatic vessels then through specialized glands called lymph nodes and other lymph organs before it finally rejoins the general circulation. While you cannot see a lymph vessel, like you can see the blue veins on the insides of your arms, or feel the flow of lymphatic fluid, like you can feel the blood pulse through the arteries of your wrists, you can occasionally feel a swollen lymph node in your neck when you are feeling under the weather. While you may only feel a few swollen lymph nodes in your whole life, you have an estimated 100,000 of them throughout your body. There are also about 5.5 gallons of lymph fluid inside you. This means that you have nearly three times as much lymph fluid in your body as you do blood. Let's look more closely at the lymph nodes. They are found throughout the body, with clusters in the groin, neck, armpits, and intestines. Inside the lymph nodes are special white blood cells called lymphocytes that produce antibodies. Antibodies attach to infectious microorganisms so that the rest of the immune system can recognize the infection and destroy it. Without antibodies, our immune system would be blind and wouldn't know what to attack. There are 100,000 small generalized lymph nodes in the body where the lymphocytes and antibodies are held. In addition, there are a few larger lymph organs with special functions. The first specialized lymph organs we will talk about are your tonsils. When you get a sore throat, what you are feeling is often diagnosed as tonsillitis. You are born with three pairs of tonsils, but many people listening to this program no longer have their tonsils. As late as the 1970s, one-third of all operations performed in the United States under general anesthesia were for the removal of tonsils. It is now recognized that rather than surgically removing swollen tonsils, it is better to keep them and improve your health. In other words, don't kill the messenger. Swollen tonsils are simply specialized lymph organs that are working overtime to produce antibodies and clean the throat. Tonsils keep the throat healthy and balance the immune system. This is an important and difficult job. The mouth is the dirtiest and most infectious place in the human body. Every tooth has millions of bacterial cells living on it. This is the plaque we brush off every time we brush our teeth. The bacteria that grow on teeth have been associated with many diseases, including heart disease. With every swallow of food, we transfer these bacteria down our throat. Now, the stomach has acids to kill these bacteria, but the throat must continually deal with this bacterial onslaught. It is the tonsils that come to our defense. While there are some extreme cases where chronically infected tonsils must be surgically removed, modern medicine is now of the opinion 
that this should be avoided if at all possible. The second specialized lymph organ we will talk about is the spleen. Its job is to filter foreign substances out of the blood, such as the billions of worn out red blood cells that die naturally every hour. The spleen also stores red blood cells and releases blood to the body in case of extreme blood loss. Many people believe that it is the liver that filters the blood. Well, rather than filter the blood, what the liver does is to create substances that combine with toxins so that they become less toxic and more easily removed from the body. The word filter is really more appropriate for the spleen than the liver. The thymus gland is another organ of the lymph system. It is located behind your breastbone in the center of your chest. The thymus is where T cells mature and as such it plays an important role in your immune system. Unfortunately, by the time most of us reach adulthood, our thymus gland shrinks and shrivels to a fraction of its original size. There are many different kinds of T cells and all of them are vitally important to your immune system. T helper cells regulate the immune system and activate other white blood cells. Cytotoxic T cells destroy virally infected and cancerous cells. Memory T cells keep a record of every infection you have ever been exposed to, so that if you are exposed to the same or a similar infection again, your immune system can recognize that you are under attack very quickly. The faster your immune system can mobilize a response, the less likely you are to have a serious infection. Many times a person will feel a little sick for a few hours, perhaps have a sore throat and feel fatigued, but then later they feel fine. This is often the case when a person is exposed to an infection that their memory T cells have on file and thus the immune system is able to knock out the infection before it can become a problem. Regulatory or suppressor T cells keep a person's immune system from being too aggressive and attacking their own body. When a person has an autoimmune disease, their regulatory T cells are not working properly. Natural killer T cells are specialized attack cells that can recognize certain stealth infections and tumors that other T cells might overlook. Clearly, the thymus gland and the T cells that mature in it are a vital part of our immune system. The appendix is another specialized part of the lymph system. Every year, there are on average 500,000 Americans who have their appendix surgically removed. For a long time, doctors thought that the appendix was a useless organ left over from evolution that now served no purpose. Today, we know that to be incorrect. It turns out that the appendix stores a reserve of good colonic flora. In the event that an infection, or in modern times, antibiotics, destroy the good bacteria in the colon, all is not lost. The good bacteria held in the appendix can come out and repopulate the colon, it's like a probiotic insurance plan. In the same way that the tonsils keep the throat healthy, the appendix keeps the colon healthy. Unlike the tonsils, however, when the appendix needs to be removed, it is a life-threatening event and surgery must be quickly performed. What can we do to keep the appendix healthy so that it won't require removal in the first place? Now that we know what the lymph system does, the next question is, how does the lymph fluid move through the body? The circulatory system has the heart, which pumps the blood along. The lymphatic system, however, relies almost entirely on the movement of our muscles to push it around our body. The lymph does get a little boost from the back pressure of blood being pumped and from the movement of the diaphragm as we breathe. But without exercise and physical activity, lymphatic flow decreases by 94%. For thousands of years, humans were forced to exercise. Before cars, we had to walk. Before gas stoves, 
we had to chop wood. Before plumbing, we had to carry water. Before grocery stores, we had to grow crops. Even if you weren't in a physically demanding job, like being a farmer or a mason or a carpenter, just day-to-day -day living made you move about. Nowadays, many people spend more than half their lives without getting any exercise at all. We already spend eight hours a day sleeping in a bed. If you work from a desk, add another eight hours of relative inactivity. Add to that the amount of time that we spend on the sofa watching TV or sitting in a vehicle during our daily commute. It is apparent that the average American now spends the vast majority of his or her time in a state of physical inactivity. While being relieved of the back-breaking manual labor that made up much of pre-industrial existence has certainly been a blessing in many ways, it has also had a negative effect on our bodies. We are meant to move, and without movement, the fluids of our bodies become stagnant, specifically our lymph fluids. This is one of the many reasons that exercise is important for our health. When you see little kids rocking their legs in a chair, this is because they instinctively want to move their lymph. Unfortunately, this behavior is not encouraged in most schools. If you have a sedentary desk job, get up every few minutes and move about. It's good for you. Try to include at least five minutes of movement in every hour of your waking day. There is another way in which we can support our lymphatic system, and that is with bitter foods. If you taste nearly any medicinal herb, you'll notice that it is bitter. Bitter flavors stimulate the immune system in the same way sweet flavors suppress it. Fruits and vegetables 5,000 years ago were much more bitter and much less sweet than they are today. An example of this is a crab apple. Thousands of years ago, all apples tasted like crab apples. If you've never had one, they are small, bitter apples that you'd rather spit out than chew. Over thousands of years, farmers picked the biggest and sweetest crab apples to grow in their orchards and in this manner bred what are now known as our modern apples. While these sweet apples taste good, they have been stripped of their medicinal lymphatic stimulating qualities. Their excessive sweetness encourages infections by increasing our blood sugar levels as well as directly suppressing our immune systems. Adding bitter herbs back into our diet with supplementation is one way that you can support your lymphatic system. Well, now you know all about the lymph system. In order to help this vitally important and overworked system, we've developed Limplex. Limplex is a nutritional supplement that contains 10 organic and wild-crafted herbal extracts specifically chosen for their lymphatic cleansing and rejuvenating properties. These herb extracts tighten the lymphatic junctions, thin the lymphatic fluid, and support proper lymph flow and immune function. Limplex contains extracts of echinacea, ginger, astragalus, cleavers, calendula, red root, lobelia, mullein, and burdock. You can take Limplex as a daily supplement or any time you feel sluggish have an infection, or are doing a general cleanse of your body. When you take Limplex, you may notice physical sensations in the lymph nodes around your body. These are signs that the sluggish nodes are getting a good cleanse. It is also possible for a person to feel tired or a little under the weather the first time they take Limplex. This is natural and is to be expected as years of accumulated debris is now being flushed out of the body. If you want to keep your body healthy, you need to keep your lymphatic system healthy. If you want to keep your lymphatic system healthy, get some exercise and consider making Limplex part of your health program. For more information about Limplex, contact the healthcare professional who told you about this report.